This video discusses QA, or Quality Assurance, best practice for information analysts. The benefits for analysts following best practice techniques are getting better and more correct results and improved productivity. But first of all, a little bit of background. I'm Colin Harris, Technical Director of Nowhere, and we're based in Wellington, New Zealand. Nowhere is an analytics, business intelligence, and information management consultancy. We've worked with many analyst teams over many years and have seen what works well and what doesn't. After many requests to provide best practice advice for analysts, we developed two half-day workshop sessions, one covering non-technical aspects and the other technical aspects. This video covers the QA segment from the non-technical workshop. To put the segment in context, I will start with a workshop introduction first. When we initially put these sessions together, we felt like it was just a lot of common sense and would people be gaining any valuable information from this? And what we have found after a few hundred people have been through these sessions, that uh, by far the majority report back that they have learnt a lot of useful information. Even though sometimes they, they did already know this, but were not actually put it in practice or had just forgotten about some of the uh, the key things. So there's two clear objectives of these sessions. The first is getting the correct information, so the right, the accurate, consistent information out of the work that's being done. And secondly is to do the work productively or efficiently and get good results quickly. Here's the uh, various segments and sections that are covered on the non-technical session. So first of all we talk about some common issues, uh, then move on to the project phases, typical project phases, we'll have a quick look at that. Communications, Communications are vital to be getting the best outcomes, uh, some data and information management concepts, and then some general tips. So we're just going to look at one part of the project phases, but touch on common issues first. Common issues, uh, we put that out to the floor and get lots of uh, feedback and ideas of the various issues people have in their different organisations. And it's amazing how similar it is across all the different sessions uh, they're the same key issues that actually come out. And I really like this Dilbert one because it's some of the key issues that do come through. Continuous changes of requirements, unclear communication, and they come out very strongly um, when, once we've put this uh, issue out to the floor. So this slide shows uh, typical project phases for a piece of work. And it depends, of course, of what the work is and what the organisation is. Uh, this one is based on research and evaluation analysts' work, uh, but it could be BI developers developing reports or um, user interfaces. It could be a range of different types of work that needs to be done, but they typically follow the same sort of approach. So this one here, first off, first um, phase there is just the request for work comes in, then it goes down to uh, someone assessing that work, it gets allocated out to the resources that are going to do the work, whether that's just an individual or a whole team, uh, and then we go down to uh, what are the requirements of the work, or often that's called a, a brief in, in some areas. Then looking into the background, um, getting some background, good background information before you get into the actual details of the work itself. Data exploration, another important stage to explore, look for outliers, get a good feel of the data before going on and doing the preparation work. The data preparation itself, then on to the actual work that's required, whether that be some analysis or whether it's generating a report or something else. Once the re work has been done, particularly analytical type work, there's some interpretation there, that adding some commentary before the uh, results get delivered out. Then on to QA, or the quality assurance part, quality assurance phase, and that's really what we're going to be talking about in more detail in this particular video, delivering the results out, and consolidation at the end. It's important to point out our arrows that we have on the, the left-hand side there, in terms of an iterative approach, is what we thoroughly recommend. You may get down to the analysis part, and then find that something's not quite right, and you need to go back up to a previous phase. Whether that could be right back to redoing some of the requirements, adjusting the requirements, or back to different data preparation, it's really important to get the correct results, or good results, that you allow that as part of the development approach you are taking. These days, Agile is pretty popular as a, a formal approach, but it could be all sorts of other uh, iterative approaches that you may, may use to do that. So now we move on to the QA, or Quality Assurance, segment of the workshop. 
And a first very important point to make is that QA should be happening throughout the whole project, not just as a discrete step that happens near the end after the development or the analysis is done. So that's an important point for us. Second point I have there is most organizations or many organizations will have their own documentation or a methodology on how they do the QA, but a lot still don't. We're uh, finding that that is the case. Second key point down there, the bigger point, is about self-review. Of course, as an, anal as an analyst or a developer is working through, doing the work, they should be reviewing, testing, QAing their own work. So whatever they deliver off to others to be checked out, they're confident that it's producing the right result. So is that result that you're getting as expected? And how do you know what the expected result should be? And that depends on the work that you're doing. You may be able to compare against other systems or other reports that have been done or other pieces of work and at least know what the ballpark numbers are going to be on the results that you're putting that out That last there. bullet point there, we say check uh, via the source system. Often the people that we're dealing with, the analyst groups, are working in a data warehouse type environment. So source systems or operational systems, the information from there is extracted into the warehouse environment and you do your analysis or your reporting from that data warehouse environment. So the results that you're getting out the other end sometimes can be good or often is good to go back to that source system, frontline system, look into that system and see what the actual real results are, the real numbers are that are coming through and, and check that they're coming out in your final results as well. Next major point I want to make is about peer review. We certainly highly recommend that a peer review takes place. It happens in some organizations, but many organizations it doesn't. Someone produces the results and then they get sent off to whoever has required those, whether it's a senior manager, a senior manager, whether it's a customer, whether it's the, the public or, or the media. Uh, and of course, that's really dangerous if things aren't checked appropriately. So we'd highly recommend that that's done. Um, other places where they say, yeah, we do peer review, it really is lip service that's being paid, and someone just does a quick check and says, hey, yeah, those numbers look about right, yep, put it out. So we would say it shouldn't just be a cursory check, it should be someone checking thoroughly, and the person who checking should know that subject matter, and they should know the underlying data where it's coming from, so you can ask sensible questions, can do appropriate checks. Another benefit out of doing always doing peer reviews is that it cross-fertilizes information between different teams or between members within the team. Because if someone's, if Bob is checking what Jill has done, Bob's going to see the techniques that Jill has done and, and maybe learn some other things from, from that as well. Next point there is about comments. This is really when people are using code-based software. Uh, for example, something like SAS, where you're writing a, uh, an actual piece of code or programming language. Um, and it's to say that when you're commenting that logic, we think a really good guideline is if you take all the logic out and just leave the comments in there, those comments should tell the story of the work that you're actually doing and what is actually being produced. The person's doing the peer review should not just look at the, the actual results coming out the end, but all of the things listed there. The documentation that's being produced, can you follow that and understand how you should be running this logic? or running this, whether it's on a weekly basis or just on an ad hoc basis. Look at the logic itself, the code, uh, or the program, or whatever the, the term is that's being used. Look at any logs that are produced after running the logic. That is really important to see if there's no stray messages coming out saying something should be looked at, whether there's an error or some note that should be reviewed to check it's producing the right results. And of course, the results themselves. Next point is about using approved business rules. This is something that was covered earlier in the workshop about how important business rules are and that organisations should have business rules. Um, and if that's the case, then part of the peer review process is that the logic is being used as part of this piece of work should be using the appropriate business rules. And of course, if business rules don't exist for the work that's being done, of course that, that uh, can't be done. Good simple rule of thumb is the bottom point there that uh, the good old run over by a bus test. If the person that developed this, produced this, uh, leaves the company or something does happen to them, can someone come along and pick up from what is left there, the documentation and the code and the folder structures that are being used, that they all make sense that someone can pick up and do this work in the future as required. Next slide then, um, not only a peer reviewer, but the person who's requesting that the work is being done, whether that's them individually or someone else in their team, they of course should be checking the results also. 
And this just shouldn't be right at the end of the process. Once it's all been done, and you say, the uh, person doing the work says, here it is, have a look at the results, they should be being involved throughout that as well. We talked about the iterative process earlier on, so as someone has developed an initial cut or a first version, should be checking themselves it's okay, get the requester or the business, who re business area who requires that information to have a look and say, this is our preliminary results, how does that look? You know, is it laid out appropriately, is it the sort of numbers you're looking at, so you know when you get through to the final result that you should be on track and delivering what needs to be delivered. Point, uh, next point there is about the formal, uh, formal sign-off process. Often this is often skipped over, particularly for the smaller pieces of work, um, and we've seen people bitten on the backside by that happening a number of times. So the recommendation there is to always have some sort of formal sign-off process. Um, if it's a small piece of work, it doesn't have to be huge in terms of the sign-off process. It can just be a matter of saying to the person or the, the business unit that's got the information, is that what you're after? Is that correct? And if it is, to put an email through to say, yes, I agree, I've got the results I want, thanks, rather than just someone verbally saying that, and that's a bit hard to, uh, um, to protect yourself further down the track, that person leaves and you've got no record that um, you had produced the correct results. So, as the note says there, it depends on the size or the importance of the work as to how formal you get in the, uh, the sign-off. So it ranges from a simple email right through to a, a much more detailed document where you've got test results and sign-offs of the results or through that particular document. Last point we have here for this little segment is ongoing validation. It's something that uh, a lot of people don't think about. You've created the first piece of work, it's you've checked it out, it delivers the results, it's peer-reviewed, it's all great, and that, that's really good. But if this is something that's done regularly, weekly reporting or monthly or quarterly or whatever, there should really be something put in place that validates this on an ongoing basis. So maybe once a quarter or once every six months, someone should go and check that those results are still returning valid results. And the best way to do that is as the original piece of work is done, you're of course testing that the results are correct, and as, that, as part of that testing, building up a little report suite that does the validation or the data quality checking. So it's not just for that initial testing, but put that to one side as a, a little suite that can be run in six months' time, and that's run through and cross-checks back against some other numbers or produce some numbers that you need to manually check, and uh, then you can continue to say, great, this is producing our correct results. It's also really useful for troubleshooting. If, if someone says, hey, the numbers are wrong, don't trust these numbers, or something really weird does come out, there's a, a number that's obviously 10 times too big that's come through because data changes over time, that checking suite of uh, logic or programs can be used very nicely to help troubleshoot and identify where an issue is actually coming from. Um, if you are interested in us doing more of these sorts of videos from other sections of this um, of these best practice workshops we put together, please contact us, let us know, and we'll certainly consider putting uh, the other sections up uh, as part of um, some videos for you to review. Thanks for listening.